Well, hello everybody. My name is Lisa Vluswick, nicknamed Lisa Longball. I'm an eight time Canadian long drive champion and I currently compete on the Golf Channel's World Long Drive Tour. My top place at the World Championships was a second place. I lost by three yards to a five time world champion, Sandra Carlberg from Sweden. And I'm absolutely passionate about golf. And that's what we're here for today. Today we're gonna talk about some golf. We wanna give some golf tips, some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can work on at home to help hit the golf ball longer, straighter, and better. So thanks for joining me. I am broadcasting to you live from my basement here in uh, Calgary, Alberta. So uh, I've been stuck in my basement actually for two weeks. I returned uh, March 15th uh, from running my Lisa Longball Golf School down in Phoenix, Arizona, which was so fun, but came home and self-isolated in the basement to be safe. I didn't even get to hug my son, uh, but yesterday when I came out of self-isolation, I gave my son a big bear hug. He's 13. So I, you can imagine how thrilled he was about that, but uh, so wonderful uh, to be out of that out of the basement dwelling and uh, but sharing with you some tips, some tips about golf. We're all excited about golf. We're all we all can't wait to get out there. But what can we do at home? What can we do at home to make our golf game better? So starting today. Today is day one of a series of clinics that I'm going to run Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern that you can watch on the Golf Town Facebook page. If you can't make it, don't worry. We're going to post it to the page right afterwards so you can watch them anytime when you do have the time. But these tips are going to help you, again, work on that golf game so you can hit the ground running as, as soon as our season is starting. So these are tips that you can practice at home right now and, uh, again, get ready for that season. So I am very proud to be a Golf Town brand ambassador one of my fellow golf town brand ambassadors Brooke Henderson is she not a sweetheart 22 years old nine LPGA tour victories and she is as sweet and kind uh, as as she is on TV in person so if you ever have a chance to meet her I can't wait till the LPGA gets started again so I can start cheering her on hey see lots of people joining I've got Tanya joining us uh, oh she's our GM Tanya Johnson out of Moncton uh, New Brunswick that's awesome so that's what I'm gonna share with you I'm gonna share with you tricks that and tips that I teach at Golf Town Clinics. I run a Golf Town Clinics for women all across Canada. Uh, I have been from Victoria, British Columbia, all the way to Moncton, New Brunswick, and everywhere else in between. I've been to well over half the stores. There's 47 Golf Town locations across Canada, and I'm coming back to stores as well. So as soon as uh, we are back out, get to leave our homes, I'll be back running clinics, hopefully uh, in, a, in a city near you. So you can watch uh, Golf Town for that. But the clinics I'm going to teach, they're not just for women. And even when, we do, when I do these clinics across Canada, men are welcome to come. The tips I have to teach will be able to help all golfers. Whether you're a single digit player, a high handicap player, or a beginner golfer, whether you're a man or a woman, I guarantee these tips will hopefully help drop those scores and hit a longer golf ball and straighter and just have more fun out there on the golf course. So, so thrilled to see all these people. I see Natasha uh, Corbin, she's a junior golfer, so thanks for joining us. Yeah, juniors are welcome to come too, kids, because you're being homeschooled right now. So, hey, this can be phys ed class for you. So, very excited to get, to get started. So, today's session, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about warm up. How do we warm up? And uh, also, uh, we're, we're, we're going to talk about the grip, two very important things uh, uh, in golf that can make a massive difference. So number one, let's talk about warm up. I always giggle when I see people come screaming into the parking lot, they come driving into the golf course parking lot, they get out of the car and they're literally doing up their shoes on the way to the first tee box. You know who you are, you know if I'm talking about you, right? So again, what happens there is when you don't give yourself any time to prepare, you rush to the tee box and you find that you're not hitting good golf shots until the fourth or fifth hole. So I'm begging you, I'm asking you for five minutes prior to your round, if you do a five minute warm up prior to your round, I guarantee you'll start hitting better shots on the first hole versus the fourth or fifth hole. So let's talk about what we can do to warm up. First thing I do when I'm warming up, I'm doing some, some big shoulder circles. Oh, hey, awesome. I see Christiane has joined us from Nova Scotia. That's fantastic. So first thing I always do, I always do some big shoulder circles. When I'm doing the shoulder circles, I try to get my shoulders to come right up under my ears. I usually do 10 backward shoulder circles followed by 10 forward shoulder circles. And again, feel free to join along with me. If you're sitting at home, you're sitting in your office, uh, on the couch, feel free, but you can already feel how the blood is flowing and how you can start to feel things warming up in your back. Those are a great way to start uh, any warm up for your, for your golf game. The next thing I do after I do my shoulder circles, I often will take my arm straight across my chest like this, nice and straight. I'll pull it across my chest 
and pull it in nice and tight. Make sure that you are not bending your arm. If you bend your arm, you'll see that you don't get the same benefit. So arm straight out in front, bring it across your chest and pull it into your chest for about 10 seconds. Again, holding that stretch for 10 seconds. I think you'll really enjoy that. Great, I see Joni and Marg and Anat and Christina all joining in, that's absolutely awesome. Christina's from um, um, Manitoba, that's fantastic. So again, holding this stretch for 10 seconds. Next thing you're gonna do is pull the other arm across the body. Again, making sure not to bend your elbow, you're gonna hold this for 10 seconds. These are things that we can be doing at home now, but I want you to be doing this especially right before your golf rant. Another great stretch is you want to take a golf club. And again, you can do this at home too. Take a golf club. You're going to put it behind your back. You're going to hold the bottom hand. You're going to take your bottom hand and pull it down as far as possible. You're going to pull that bottom down to the hand to the ground for about 10 seconds. And again, you're going to start to feel a fantastic stretch. After 10 seconds, what you're going to do, you're going to pull your club up by your top hand until you're holding the head of your golf club. Once you're holding the head of your golf club, then I want you to pull up with your top hand towards the, the sky. Once you're doing that, you can feel a fantastic stretch in that shoulder rotator cuff. Uh, I've just come over some rotator cuff injuries. This has helped me tremendously. So again, welcome. I see Linda and Heather, Ellen, Kathy, Mark. Thanks everyone for joining. So this is a great stretch. And again, you can be doing this at home. After 10 seconds, I take my bottom hand, put it up top, top hand on the bottom. I'm pulling down towards the ground with that bottom hand. So pulling down for 10 seconds with that bottom hand. Once that 10 seconds is up, I'm grabbing the head of the club and again, pulling that top hand towards the sky. I guarantee you'll love this. Those shoulders, rotator cuff area is going to be warmed up. It's going to be ready to hit that first tee shot when you're ready to go. So that's a fantastic stretch. Next thing I want you to do when you're stretching, work out your sides. Whether you're a right-handed or left-hand player, you're always swinging on the same side of your body. And speaking of right and left-handed players, Canada has one of the highest populations of left-handed players. I've heard up to as high as 23% of all Canadian golfers are left-handed. And people always ask me when I'm down in the US, why are so many Canadian golfers left-handed? Well, for many golfers, not all, but for many, what happens is a lot of us grow up playing hockey, right? We've got outdoor rinks and it's just a rite of passage for some, for many families in Canada. So what happens is a lot of people are right-handed. So what they like to do is they like to skate down the rink with the stick in their dominant hand. They go left hand low, they shoot left in hockey, and then that feels more comfortable in golf. Now, many years ago, our parents often told us, hey, I'm not buying you a, a left hand, you, you, you can use my hand-me-down club. So they didn't buy those left-handed clubs. But now, with so many equipment manufacturers having fantastic left-handed equipment available, uh, it, it's, it's awesome. And I will give a heads up to my lefties out there, respect to the lefty, is that if you ever travel, especially down to the United States, make sure you call ahead if you're renting clubs. Often, many golf courses only have one, two sets of left-handed rentals. So double check, because I've met whole foursomes of lefties. So make Sure, that's a great tip out there. So as I was saying, whether you're right-handed or whether you're left-handed, you're only using one side of the body. What I'm going to teach you in our series of, uh, of clinics over the weeks here is the key to, to building distance is creating coil and torque. How do we create coil and torque with our body? Well, the more we are warmed up on both sides of our body, not just one side of our body, it will make us more flexible and it'll make it so much easier to turn than creating coil and torque, which I guarantee we will lead to, to more more distance. So you have to warm up your sides. Two stretches that I use, I go with my club above my head like this when I'm at the driving range, but again these are things you can be doing at home, and I lean over to the side and I'm literally stretching, I'm really reaching, reaching, reaching out to the side as far as I can, and I'm holding that for 10 seconds. I, again then I go up to the top and I reach out to the other side, really trying to reach as far as I can sideways, holding that for 10 seconds. Another great way to stretch out your sides, I simply put my uh, club uh, down, I put hand over hand on my club, and then I pull my hip towards uh, my hands. I just kind of pull my hip towards my hands. I feel a great stretch there. Hold that for 10 seconds. And again, this is something great for you to do in the living room at home right now, and pulling with those hands towards your hips or your hip and holding that for about 10 seconds. I guarantee that's gonna warm up your sides and help you make more coil and torque. Hey, Scott from Peterborough, thanks for coming. Rob from uh, Canada, go lefty. There's one of our lefties there, and, and Anthony, thanks for joining. Really appreciate it, everybody. So again, yeah, I, when you hear us teach uh, with respect to my lefties, I'm not gonna teach left foot, right foot as we go through the series. I know that drives lefties crazy because 
they have to constantly be switching the, the directions or instruction in their head. You'll hear me talk lead foot or trail foot or front foot or back foot. So I won't be saying left foot, right foot, because I respect my lefties, respect my lefties. So as I said, when we're doing the warm up, we start with the shoulder circles, then we pull the arm across the chest, put the club behind the back, couple side stretches. The next thing that you want to work up is your legs. If I had a dollar for every time someone said to me, Oh, Lisa, you're a long driver? Oh, yeah, I can see it. Check it out. Two tickets to the gun show, Lisa, right? Holy cow. I could do a thousand push-ups a day. I could bench press 500 pounds 500 times a day, and it's not going to help me hit a golf ball one yard longer. The key to hitting a, a long golf ball, you got to use the big muscles. Where are the big muscles? Your legs. So I do a lot of corporate and charity golf tournaments where I get to stand on a par five and hit balls for guests and raise money for charity. And I'll have guys that come up, they're six foot five, 250 pounds, and, and they come up and, and, and they're just stacked and, and, and they're gonna hit this long ball. But as soon as I see them start with their arms, I'm always like, got them. Because my legs are stronger than any guy's arms. So this is where, golfers, this is where we need to find the power source. So uh, this is what we need to warm up. So again, I will teach you as we go through our sessions, how do we use the legs, glutes, the core, to develop our speed, not our arms, which are, again, are so much smaller muscles. So a, a great stretch that I like to do uh, to, to, to warm up the legs, simply have feet shoulder width apart. And then again, try not to bend your knees. You're gonna lean forward and you're just gonna hang. This is a great stretch for the lower back, but it's also a wonderful hamstring stretch. Another way you can do this is you can cross one leg over the other, and again, leaning forward. You should never be in pain when you're stretching. Slightly uncomfortable is okay, but never in pain. And again, then you can switch to the other leg and do it over on this side. A great stretch that you can be doing at home, you can even just pull a chair in, pull a chair that, you're, that you have at home or the back of a couch, throwing your leg up on that. If you're at a golf course, you'd maybe use a bag stand or a bench at the golf course. Nice straight leg leaning forward, great hamstring stretching here, holding that for 10 seconds. Just make sure you're not bouncing, you just wanna hold that. And then finally, switch legs and do 10 seconds on the other side. But these are things you can be doing at home to improve your flexibility that I guarantee will help you not only hit better golf shots and, and, and be in the right positions, but help prevent, prevent injury as well. Another great uh, dynamic stretch that you can do for your legs is uh, even just using your golf club, balancing with your golf club. Again, you can do this in your living room at home right now and doing 10 leg swings on each side and switching your hand and your club when you get to the other side. And uh, those, again, great ways to warm up the legs. Now, some of you might be going, all right, I'm not into the stretching, Lisa. I'm not into the whole Richard Simmons thing here. I'm not gonna do it on range. Okay, even if you don't think the stretching is gonna help you, but I guarantee you it will, this is the one stretch I beg all of you to do. This is such an important stretch. I'm just gonna say hi to Stephanie and Carolyn, Debbie, Sue, Michelle, thanks so much all for joining. So this is the most important stretch that I can give you, and that is feet shoulder width apart. You're gonna hold your club at about chest height. Very slowly, with your feet planted on the ground, you're gonna to start to turn and look behind you. As your back warms up, you're gonna turn a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more. That stretch is absolutely key to getting your back warmed up and, and, and getting you into that position that you, you're gonna be able to hit the best golf shot possible. What happens is our back muscles get tight. For those of you who are just coming into spring here and we're gonna be getting on the golf courses, there's still gonna be chilly mornings, so spring and fall golf. Or you know, those of you that play in corporate and charity golf tournaments, you show up to a par three, there's already a group standing on the tee box, or maybe it's a Saturday or Sunday, so now you're waiting 15 minutes until you actually get to swing a golf club. If you haven't swung a golf club in 10 minutes, that doesn't count with putting, actually made a full swing, I think you need to make sure that you're doing this, whether it's on the fairway, on the tee box, but anytime you haven't swung the golf club in 10 minutes, do that stretch. It's going to warm up your back muscles, allow you to get into better positions, and I guarantee hit a golf ball more consistently and longer. So that whole routine takes me about five minutes. And if you spend five minutes before your round, you will be hitting better shots on the first hole versus the fourth or fifth hole. Okay, so we've talked about the warm-up, so you know the key of the warm-up. Let's move to the second part of our lesson, which is grip. Can again, just say hi to Amanda out there, David uh, from London, Ontario. Uh, oh, how long should you do the torso twist? Great question, David. I usually do about 10. So I usually try to do about 10, uh, but uh, you'll feel the benefits right away after about five or six, but I like to do about 10. And if you can, try to go a little bit deeper uh, each and every time. So that's awesome, right? 
And I see that Tanya says, I do notice the difference if I don't stretch before swinging. So great to see that you're already a proponent uh, of stretching. All right, let's talk about grip. This is the only connection that we have to the golf club. So the grip is so, so important. There's three kinds of grips out there. There's the baseball grip or the 10 finger grip. That's awesome. There's the overlap grip where the pinky goes over the uh, middle finger and the index finger. And there's also the interlock grip where the pinky goes in between that Tiger Woods would use this grip. So there's many golfers out there that use all three time types of grips and all three are awesome. So it's whatever you personally choose. There is no grip that is better than the other. If you have a junior golfer starting, I definitely recommend starting with the 10 finger grip or the baseball grip. Just make sure that your junior golfer doesn't separate their hands because I find that sometimes, especially if they play hockey, they'll separate their hands. So just making sure that those hands are pushed together, but that's a, a great grip to start. Okay. And as we're talking about instruction, I also want to mention, Hey, I'm considered a professional golfer. I am not a golf professional. A golf professional is a PGA of Canada here in Canada, PGA of Canada professional that works at golf courses and driving rings. Please, you need to take lessons from PGA of Canada instructors. I am sharing with you tips and tricks that I have learned from my PGA of Canada instructors, my amazing instructors. My, my coach right now is Paul Horton. He won the PGA of Canada coach of the year for 2017. So I'm sharing with you tips that work for me but please if you want to get better and you want to learn proper golf technique you've got to go see your PGA of Canada instructors but I'll share with you the things that my instructors have, have shared with me so so again as I just mentioned three different types of grips ten finger overlap interlock they're all awesome this is where I start to see some mistakes I start to see when a lot of people when they go to grab their 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 golf grip I can't see the butt end of their club if I can't see the butt end of your club, what happens is that ends up getting buried somewhere in your hand. And when we go to the top of the backswing, it allows your club face to go in a bunch of crazy positions because it's not set properly. It's not stable. So, and, and then for any of you, if you're thinking, gosh, I wonder if that's me. Well, if you have a grip problem, often you're going to see it on your glove. Those of you that have those wear marks on your glove, you know, those, you actually probably get holes in your glove and then you'll see it progressively get dirtier and worn out, more worn out over time. That means you probably don't you're not you don't have a good golf grip so we need to we need to work on that just saying hi to Sandra Linda Carolyn um, uh, and the lighter grip I will absolutely talk about Carolyn the, the lighter grip out there and uh, Sarah from Airdrie Alberta that's absolutely awesome so again what's important is I need to see the butt end of the club so when you set up your golf grip so this would be in your lead hand so as you're facing the fairway this is the hand closest to the fairway the hand that would be at the top of your of your golf club so your top hand you need to make sure every golf grip has some sort of a line some sort of a cap I want to make sure the pudgy part of your hand is uh, above that cap is above that cap or above that line then you, that will create more stability as you're holding the golf club so that's step number one step number two we need to make sure the grip is in our fingers absolutely important especially women tend to get that grip into their hands and again that's where you're going to see some of that wear mark also on your uh, on your gloves we have to get it into our the base of our fingers what are some drills to get into the base of your fingers so one drill that I think is fantastic I like to stand nice and tall um, as, as uh, with shoulders back chest chest up not not arching your back but just nice and tall make sure the butt end of the club is underneath the pudgy part of your hand you're gonna hold let your hand, arms uh, hang naturally beside your body I want you to bend your knees and pretend you're picking up a briefcase or suitcase how would you hold this the club of uh, the handle of your club and pretend it's a briefcase or suitcase if you were to open your hand you will see it is in the base of the fingers you are not going to pick up a briefcase or suitcase in the middle of your hand so that's a great tip another one is how would you hold an umbrella so again, making sure that the cap is showing or that the, the pudgy part of your hand is, is uh, above the cap and how would you hold an umbrella? That's, that's another great way to think about uh, how to get it into the fingers. But I, I, for me, I, I really like the, the suitcase drill, but whatever works for you. But this is something you can be practicing at home right now. We're stuck at home. Why don't we practice this? Make sure your grip is A100% as we're heading into the golf season. So again, standing nice and tall, picking that. Now the bottom hand, where the bottom hand's gonna go, it's gonna go into the base of your fingers there. So that's, that's a little bit easier to be able to kind of see it and place it in the base of the fingers, and then you wrap your hand over. So again, the grip will look, again, whether, however you're holding it, whether it's 10 finger interlock or overlap. One of the things I don't want to see, I do not want to see the thumb straight down the uh, golf grip. The reason why is tension is a club head speed killer. If you talk to any world long drive competitor, and these are the, the, the longest men and women in the, in the world uh, in terms of golf, 
is I guarantee you, every one of them will tell you soft hands. Because tension, as I said, it's a club head speed killer. Tense muscles are not fast muscles. Loose, relaxed muscles, supple muscles, those are fast muscles. So again, I want to make sure that we have that, we, that, that we don't put that thumb down the, straight down the shaft. The reason being, if you do it right now, if you have, end up having a club or, or re-watching this video later on the Golf Town Facebook page, try to put your thumb down the shaft. Push down. See how much tension you can create. Then I want you to take your thumb and put it uh, towards the inside of the club, towards the inside of the club, and now try to press down. You can't because it doesn't have that same stain stability, which helps you relax your grip pressure. So having a relaxed grip pressure, again, will allow you to create club head speed and that will lead to distance. So with your grip, just make sure it doesn't get stuck into the palm of your hand. Make sure it's in the base of your fingers. Do that suitcase drill. You can even do this on the tee box. You actually, if you watch Adam Scott when he sets up, you'll see that with his uh, top hand, you can see him setting up as, he step, as he's setting on, tee, uh, uh, on the tee box in his pre-shot routine. So again, those are some really key tips to making sure uh, that, that uh, you have a great golf grip. So hopefully these tips about warming up and grip have, have given you a great start to our lessons. As I mentioned, we're going to be running these clinics on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and uh, Saturdays. So 1 p.m. Eastern, they'll air live, but also uh, we'll be a Available on the Golf Town Facebook page after that. So my next lesson will be this Thursday, 1 p.m. We're, we're going to be talking about posture and ball position. And again, I feel I can add 15, 20 yards to many of you, especially if you have poor posture, just by fi fixing your posture. And it I won't change your swing at all, but if we can fix your posture, I think we can add 15 to 20 yards on many of your golf swings if you have impo improper posture. And the ball position, poof, It'll blow your mind when I, talk, when I talk to you about that. So can't wait to see you. I, I hope you'll join me on Thursday. And again, thanks so much, Sharon. I, I'm glad you enjoyed the tips. And Linda, I'm really I'm thrilled that you enjoyed it. Sarah, uh, that's awesome. Uh, Marissa, Lil, thanks so much. I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. But if you missed this, you can uh, watch this uh, uh, anytime you want on the Golf Town Facebook page. Thanks very much, everyone. It's Lisa Longball signing out.